Okay, let's get started. Thank you all for coming. Um, my name is Jerome Doshe. I work on the Android Tools project at Google. And today I'm going to talk about the uh, manifest merger. So it's one of the tools which is present in the uh, tool chain for building Android applications. And this is particularly useful when uh, you are developing an application which is either using a lot of variants, meaning you, know, you want to have a pro or free version, stuff like that, or which, which is importing a lot of libraries, or both. And when you, when you are in such cases, um, you most likely need to um, merge uh, Android manifest XML files. And there used to be a tool in the previous version of the, uh, of the tool chain, which was rather simple, which could not really merge um, library files and stuff like that. So we completely rewrote it and we added a lot of customization uh, capabilities to it so that it would be a lot more useful and hopefully you guys will have less and less uh, hard coding or hand doing of these um, manifest merging activities. So I'm gonna go through um, merging different XML files in front of you, there's no slides. Um, and I'm gonna show you how you can actually customize the tool to fit your needs. So the first thing I'm going to show is, uh, you've got an application here, uh, which has its own Android manifest, obviously. And, um, and it has an activity, there's nothing too, too difficult here. This application, as you can see inside the Gradle here, is having two libraries. And when you look more carefully, you can see that there's two flavors, flavor one and flavor two, and the lib one is imported only for the flavor one, the lib two is only imported for the flavor two. So right now I'm just gonna build the flavor one. So lib1 only is, inter is interesting, and this manifest file here it will then be merged into the main uh, manifest file. So I've got another editor here, which shows the resulted merged activity. So this is where we're starting from. Uh, so if I build my project, um, it's not gonna do much right now, but basically, this is the version that I just, I just merged, right? So you, you recognize the first activity from this on the way manifest, there's an activity here, and there's another activity here, and I merged the two of them. So let's see how this happened, because for instance, there is this tools replace um, uh, customization that I have added, and if I remove it, let's see what happens. So if I try to build now, I'm gonna get a build error, because uh, what's happening is that the main manifest file is defining an icon and a label, and so is the library. As you can see, it's redefining an icon and a label. So this is the first thing that you will probably run into when you start, when you start merging uh, XML files is that you've got conflicting attributes in two different Android manifest files. And when I say conflicting, they have to have a different value, right? So if they had both defined the same attributes, but they both had the same value, we're fine with that, we're not gonna generate an error. But if they have a different value, this is conflicting, we will generate an error and we will fail the build like we just showed. So that's why you need to then tell to the tool that you want to actually, oh, sorry, you want to, um, okay. Let me retype it. You wanted to um, replace, All right. That. Okay, why is tools right now? What did I do? Ah, oh, come on. The demo gods are not with me today. Um, okay, well, sorry about that. I'm going to lose a little bit of time here. Good, good Lord, I am prudent, I know me, so I have a backup copy of the entire project. Come on, come on. Yes, reload the project, please. All right. So we're back to the first version where I had my tools node, 
uh, sorry, not this one, where I had my tools replace in place, right in place. Okay, so now if I do it again, it's going to build. So that's the first thing you're going to find the need to customize for. Now we're going to get into some more, um, some different type of customization. Let's go back to the Android view and let's go to the lib again, to the manifest file here. And you see there is an activity here in my library. Um, it is a rather simplistic example, but let's say that your library has several activities and you're really only interested in bringing some of them into your application. You want to remove some of these other activities which are not useful for that particular application. So the way to do it is to come back again to your main manifest file and you have to say something like activity and you have to give the name of the activity. So that's the one that comes from this library. So here I give the entire name and you can give a tools node remove annotation. So when I say this, when I tell uh, the manifest merger this type of things, I tell it that if there is any activity with that particular name being merged, just remove it. So let's go back to the current version. This is the current version of the merged XML. As you can see, there's two activities here, one after the other. Let's save this and let's rebuild. Let's look at the console. Okay, it's successful. Let's go back here. Bingo, you've got only one left. Okay, so you can selectively remove sub-elements of, of the XML files you're merging in. That works for, for, application, for uh, activities, but much for, it works for anything else, right? You can remove permissions, you can remove anything you want, uh, but you just have to give the right key. If you were to say something like remove all, then you do not need to give the key here. You could remove that and you could say, I want to remove all all activities coming from any libraries that I'm merging. Okay, so you can, you can remove all the, the incoming stuff if that's your desire. Another thing you can do is strict. So when you define a node like this as being strict, that means that only you can define this particular activity. Only this particular app can define it. And if it tries to merge a library which redefines it, it should fail. Even if the values are the same, it doesn't really matter. You should be the sole definition of this particular activity. So if I try to build now, it will complain that, um, that this activity has a strict uh, merging uh, policy and that it's defined in the library, so it's refusing to merge it, basically. Okay? Another thing you could do is to say that you only want to merge uh, attributes. So. If we go back to the library, you see the library has this activity and it has a, a child, which is the intent filter. Once I have changed the main manifest file to say that you only want to merge attributes and you rebuild, this time it passes, of course, you can go back to the merge once and you can see that now you only have the activity without its children merged from the library. Okay, so again, you know, it's a flexibility uh, that, you can, that you can use. We also have merge only children, but it's not very useful for most people. So most of the people will use the default, which is implicit. So this is equal to not provide anything. So if I do that, I'm going to come back to the original state where I didn't have any, uh, any type of annotation for this activity coming from the library. Okay. Another thing I want to show you is, um, is some implicit declarations that get added by the manifest merger. So when you are in a situation where you are importing a library which is, was targeting, for instance, version 1 of Android, um, there were things that were implicit in such runtime, such permissions, for instance, like you know, access to the storage or things like that. So the fact is that these libraries were not defining those permissions because they were implicitly defined or granted by the platform. But when you import these libraries inside your application, if you do not define these permissions, these libraries will not function correctly in a newer environment. So if you try to run it in ICS or in Lollipop, um, you must explicitly set those permissions so that the library can function properly. But we're going to do that automatically. So for instance, let's go back to my Android manifest here. And then I'm going to start saying that this library had a mean SDK of one. 
Now I can rebuild. I can look at my <coughs> merged file, and as you can see, three permissions were added automatically. Okay, so those permissions were the ones that were automatically granted at version one, and because now you are targeting a newer version of, uh, of, the, uh, of the platform, here I'm targeting 15, um, they get automatically added. All right, so that's you know, something that you must be careful about in understanding where those extra permissions are coming from. Now, let's take the other case where you are going to import a library which says now it only supports 21. So here you potentially have a problem. You're trying to build an application which is targeting 15, and you're trying to import a library which can only work on Olipop. So in theory, this should not work. And in practice, it does not, right? So it's going to tell you, you're trying to build for 15, you're trying to import something that only that requires 21, it's not going to work. Um, so that was like, you know, our initial feeling on how things should work, but then, you know, obviously there are cases where Yes, you're importing this library, which seems to require 21, but really you're only using a feature which you know works fine on 15. And so, you know, this requirement of like, you know, forcing everybody to then extract this specific feature into yet another library and make that, you know, being uh, only 15 type of library and then import that, we thought it was a little inconvenient. So we decided that yet again, you could customize uh, this particular this particular uh, use SDK to say that you want to, sorry, to, you wanted to um, say that you authorize that this particular library can be imported. So if you look at the library, uh, where am I? Yes, okay. So here you have to take the package name, obviously, of the library. So this is the package name of the library. You go back to the main one, and now you say that you authorize the, this library to be imported even if the version are theoretically conflicting. And now it passes, and obviously if you go back here, you can see that the minutes SDK is 15, not 21, right? it's still 15, and you have to be yourself very careful about which feature you're gonna be using of this particular library, which was supposed to require 21. Okay, all right, so another thing I wanted to show is, um, go back to project, and let's close this guy for now. I wanted to add, say, I'm gonna to go to the flavor one, and I'm gonna add a new activity there. I'm gonna call this my main flavor one activity, maybe. Okay, good enough. Obviously, it has added a new uh, Android manifest in flavor one. So this Android manifest is what we call an overlay manifest. So this is something that lives above the application, the main manifest file as we call it. So when you are merging, you're merging the main manifest file and above it is all these overlays, comes from all the variants and all the build types, and then under you've got the libraries. And so this hierarchy of Android manifest will decide who win when there is a conflict and who, and who needs to be annotated when there is a conflict. So for instance, here you've got a new activity which is very different, but if I wanted to say, you know, to, to change something of the main manifest file, I could do it right here. So let's go back to the main, mani well, let's go to the Android view, it's easier. So if we go back to the main manifest file, who could we change? Oh, we could change again maybe the, the label. Do we have a label? We do. So we could very well say, oh, it's the activity label. Yeah, I was like wondering, oh, this is passing. How can it pass? So, well, let's first do it once. Ah, okay, well. Of course, I need to resync. Can I rebuild everything? Okay, is, uh, yeah, I made a mistake here. I don't know what I did, but um, why well, is it not finding R? I have. Okay. Uh, let's, let's, um, let's say that it worked. <laughs> let's continue. So here, if I was to say that I want to override the label, Android label, and I say something, whatever, 
Again, here, I would need to say that I'm overriding the version in the application. So same thing, I would have to say tools, replace, and then I would say label. So what happens is that this overlay is replacing the label of the main Android application, which is itself replacing the label coming from the library. Okay, so you have all this hierarchy of Android XML files which get merged one after the other, and you need to understand that you know, there, there is a hierarchy, and, and, and we go through these files one after the other to merge them into the main file. Okay? So um, I think that more or less concludes what I want to, to show, and I have only one minute left anyway. So um, feel free to ask me questions. Uh, thank you for, um, for coming here today. Uh, there is a mailing list that you can use to ask questions once, uh, you know, once you start using it. And uh, there's many more features that I didn't show today, like injection. Uh, you, know, you can replace certain values instead of you know, using an hard-coded value like this. You could, for instance, say you know, activity label. And then in your build file, whenever I can write correctly, in your build file, in your build.gradle, you could say my activity label is going to be called this, and then you, this will get injected and replaced automatically during the merging. So that's also a very powerful feature that you can, you know, change the values of the, uh, of the um, XML elements through the build.xml, uh, the build.gradle, sorry. All right, thank you.